What's going on guys? Data report here with this important message about COVID. The World Health Organization reports that COVID cases around the world are now up by about 80%. The EG.5 variant is also on the increase around the world. Here in the United States, the EG.5 variant, nicknamed Eurus, now makes up 17.3% of all new cases. We are seeing rises in hospitalizations and in cases themselves because of this new variant which is spreading. With the summer surge well underway, I thought now would be an ideal time to go over the latest symptoms that are found from a ZOE study with the EG.5 variant and that are listed on the CDC website. So the era strain of Omicron, according to the ZOE Health study, the five most common symptoms of Omicron are runny nose, headache, fatigue, and that could be mild or severe, sneezing, and a sore throat. The CDC says the um, most common symptoms of COVID right now, or at least listed on their website, is fever or chills, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. I can tell you from what I'm hearing from a lot of people right now is the new loss of taste or smell is not as common as it used to be. And this does not include all symptoms. Uh, pink eye was a thing back during the winter wave and still could be a thing during this wave as well. Now with uh, EG.5 spreading, we are seeing a number of uh, more, you know, more severe cases starting to go upward, meaning more people are starting to seek medical attention because hospitalizations are rising. If someone is being hospitalized, that means they're doing pretty sick with COVID-19. And we know EG.5 can be more immune evasive and immunity levels are running low right now. A lot of people have not had a booster and... Many people have not been infected for quite some time, so there's not much of a sense of population immunity at this time. Therefore, the number of uh, more very sick cases where people need to be hospitalized are rising faster than they had been, which before prior to this wave, they were dropping to uh, record low levels. So when do you need to seek medical attention? Well, here's what the CDC says. When you have trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion, inability to wake or stay awake, pale gray or blue colored skin, lips or nail beds, depending on skin tone. If someone is showing any of these signs, call 911 or call ahead to your local emergency facility. Notify the operator that you are seeking care for someone who has or may have COVID-19. And it does say here on the CDC website, this list is not all possible symptoms. Please call your medical provider for any other symptoms that are severe or concerning to you. It is also important that we know the different types of testing. There are PCR tests, which you can get done at a drugstore, a doctor's office. They may administer it uh, when you're in the hospital, in the emergency department maybe an urgent care clinic, but there's also these uh, rapid tests, which are much faster. A PCR test has to be sent out to the lab to get a result. There's also antigen tests. Majority of people who do the at-home test, it's the same thing. You can get results within 15 to 30 minutes relatively quickly. PCR testing is actually better than antigen testing for uh, a big reason. If you test positive on a PCR test, Chances are that is going to be reported to your local government and uh, health department and it gets added into the case count. These at-home tests do not get reported in most cases. Some places you may be able to report an at-home test and say that you tested positive, but in most cases that's not going to happen. And with the at-home test, you have uh, two lines. If you have one line at the top, that means you're negative. If it shows up with a line at the top for the control, 
and a line at the bottom where it says T. Uh, that means you have tested positive for COVID. Alrighty, prevention methods. There are some simple ways that we can help keep ourselves safe during this COVID wave. The biggest one, when you're out in public spaces, if you know it's going to be crowded, or if it's just, you know, you're going out in public in general, depend on how safe you feel, you want to wear a mask. The mask is the number one effective, safe and effective tool we have to prevent yourself and your family from catching COVID. Yes, your kids can wear a mask too. They make children size masks. And another uh, big tool that we can use is clean air, air purifiers. I have an air purifier behind me that runs most of the time. And it just works. It just makes sense. You know, there's a lot of dirty particles in the air, which could include coronavirus, which we know is an airborne, invisible virus that's in the air. We can't see it, but it could be there. If you have an air purifier running, it's going to help clean your air and keep the bad air out. So again, masking and clean air from air purifiers, HEPA. You want to make sure you are using a HEPA air purifier. It's very key that uh, you use a HEPA. You know, one that has like a pre-filter, then the HEPA filter on the other side is going to ensure that you are breathing in clean air and that you are staying safe. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more important messages like this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And if you know anyone who needs to know what the latest symptoms of COVID are, because there seems to be a lot of confusion right now. People are thinking, oh, I may have the summer flu or just the summer cold. No, it very well could be COVID, which is why you need to test for COVID the moment you start experiencing any of these symptoms that we just listed. So share this with anyone who needs to see it. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Have a good day.